This is another Grand Chamber judgment of the European Court of Human Rights, which is dealing with the issue of the right of early access um, to legal assistance. This judgment was issued by the court in May 2017, so it actually applies the Ibrahim judgment. So this um, case originates from Bulgaria and uh, the facts uh, of the case go back to 1999, so 18 years uh, before the judgment of the Grand Chamber was issued. The applicant in this case uh, was arrested uh, on the suspicion of armed robbery and uh, a double murder committed together with other persons. And he was first put in um, the so-called detention under the Ministry of Interior Order. And now this is a, an interesting legal construction that exists in Bulgaria, which um, actually allows police to detain persons outside of the framework of the criminal proceedings to determine whether they can be um, considered suspects in a criminal case. Um, so he was first detained under um, these provisions and then under the regular provisions of the Criminal Procedure Code. And uh, during the first three days of detention, he was not given access to a lawyer. Uh, there was a bit of um, debate between the applicant and the government about what has actually happened in these first days of detention, in part because most of this detention was undocumented. Uh, so the applicant uh, said that he uh, was asking for a lawyer several times, but his requests were not uh, granted. And he said that he was asked questions about his involvement in the criminal offense. Uh, however, there were no record whatsoever of, of this questioning. Um, so the government argued actually that uh, because there was no record of the questioning, um, this temporary uh, restriction on the right um, of access to a lawyer during the first three days of detention uh, did not affect the overall uh, fairness of the proceedings. And they were citing, um, among other authorities, uh, Saldus versus Turkey judgment. So the Chamber judgment of the European Court of Human Rights actually found that there was no violation of Article 6. And they have um, broadly followed the um, Saldus approach, or one interpretation of the Saldus approach. The Saldus um, judgment uh, says that if the right of access to legal assistance was restricted, and if his behavior had had um, negative, negative procedural consequences on, uh, at the later stages of the proceedings, then uh, a violation of Article 6 should be found. Uh, however, in the Simeonovi case, because there was no trace of any questioning that has happened um, in the first three days of uh, suspect's detention, there was also no tangible proof uh, showing how uh, what has happened in, in this period uh, may have negatively impacted the position of the defense or the outcome of the case. Now the applicant has um, challenged this decision to the Grand Chamber and he was hoping that the, the Grand Chamber would then say that uh, because of uh, the length, lengthy period during which his right of access to law was restricted, and um, a violation of Article 6 should be found automatically. The Grand Chamber has um, indeed changed its reasoning, but not in the direction that the applicant has hoped. Because the Grand Chamber uh, judgment had to be taken after the um, decision in Ibrahim was adopted. So uh, the Grand Chamber of the Court has also found that there was no violation of Article 6 in this case, however, on a different grounds than um, the Chamber judgment did. So they 
did say that indeed the, the applicant's right of access to legal assistance was restricted, that there were no compelling reasons to restrict the right, and then they went on to apply uh, the Ibrahim criteria. So the Ibrahim criteria um, are, for instance, uh, whether the applicant was particularly vulnerable, for example, by reason of his age of mental capacity, uh, the legal framework of uh, governing the pretrial proceedings and admissibility of evidence, so whether it was actually um, complied with, uh, whether the applicant had the possibility to um, challenge the evidence, but also uh, such criteria as the quality of the evidence and uh, the circumstances in which it was um, gathered and whether there could be a doubt about its reliability and accuracy, whether evidence was obtained lawfully or unlawfully, and the use to which the evidence was put, um, in, in particular uh, whether it was a significant piece of evidence and the strength of other evidence um, in the case, among, among other criteria. So applying this list of criteria, then the Grand Chamber um, of the court found um, that uh, Article 6, the, fair, the right to a fair trial, was not violated because although there were um, certain violations in the legal provisions, um, in, in, in compliance with the legal provisions in this case, the evidence, um, the, the amount of evidence that uh, was gathered against the applicant was already overwhelming and it was reliable and possibly accurate. So there was um, no uh, so there was no uh, issue with the overall fairness of the proceedings in this case. So you might ask yourself um, if the outcome of the chamber judgment and the grand chamber judgment is the same, so what is, why does it matter? What is the difference? Um, and this brings me back to the question that I asked in the previous video. Uh, does the Ibrahim find, finding mean that there is a change in direction uh, taken by the European Court of Human Rights in the Saudis case? And I think that if we, particularly if we look at the Simeonovi, judgment, um, we can say with confidence that there was a change in direction. There are two main points which I think dif differentiate Ibrahim, Simeonovi and other cases that apply Ibrahim from the Saudi standard. So the first point is quite um, straightforward actually. Uh, in Saudus, uh, the Saudus doctrine said that um, whenever there is a restriction on the right of access to a lawyer at the police detention stage and um, during that time uh, the suspect makes a statement which is used against him in the subsequent proceedings or if he remains silent and his silence is used against him then this should lead um, to an automatic violation of a fair trial. So the proceedings taken on the whole are, um, by definition, unfair. And the Ibrahim uh, case now takes, introduces a different standard. So following Ibrahim, um, even if the suspect makes state a statement in, in police custody and it, his right of access to law is violated, and even if there are, there are no compelling reasons to violate um, the right of access to a lawyer, then uh, the European Court of Human Rights would have to go through uh, this criteria formulated in Ibrahim. So the um, violation of Article 6 would not anymore be considered automatic. And this brings me to the second um, point, which is perhaps more important. And, and related to this first point. So if um, you look at um, the Saldus judgment and other uh, case law of the European Court of Human Rights on the right to fair trial, the 
definition of fair trial or it, the, the approach of the court to the fair trial was um, taken from the standpoint of procedural fairness. So when the court was applying the analysis of the fairness of the proceedings on the whole, it was traditionally looking at, um, the, at whether procedural safeguards have been complied with. Now, um, in Ibrahim, and um, this is also clear from the Simeonovi case, the court takes a different approach to the definition of procedural fairness because it also incorporates um, criteria like the accuracy and reliability of evidence. So it would now also assess whether, uh, for instance, the information based on, on which the conviction is based was accurate or reliable. And this is a different type, different kind of approach to the definition of procedural fairness. This is a definition that takes into account the factual, uh, the factual um, component of the case. The European Court of Human Rights um, has traditionally um, re refrained from engaging into factual issues in, uh, when dealing with um, allegations made under Article 6. And uh, there were two main reasons for this. The first is that it is a human rights court which does not deal with the uh, question of guilt or innocence. And the second, um, maybe more important reason, is that it is so far removed from the actual proceedings on the ground that it's um, difficult um, and risky for it to be um, dealing with issues like whether the evidence um, in the given case was, was accurate or reliable. And um, in my view, um, Ibrahim and the Simeonovi case um, constitute a departure from this traditional approach. The Simeonovi versus Bulgaria case makes it clear that um, in the way in which the European Court of Human Rights will apply uh, the Ibrahim test and its new approach to the right uh, to legal assistance suspects in police detention constitutes a drawback compared to the standard that was developed in Saldos. Now, this may not matter that much for those EU member states who are also members of the um, EU Directive on the Right of Access to a Lawyer, which, provide for, which provides for a clearer and um, a stronger standard in this regard. But uh, the situation may be different for those Council of Europe member states who are not members of this directive.